Hey guys, today we are looking at learning target 10B. This is the second part, which we will focus on box and whisker plots. Okay, so first thing is we want to look at what a box and whisker plot actually looks like. So um, it essentially shows a summary of the data by comparing it to a number line. So it lets you sort of see how spread out the data is. And it breaks that data up into quartiles. Okay, so as you're looking at this example, you'll see that there are five main points, what we call the lower extreme, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the upper extreme. Those five points break up the data into four sections. So from the lower extreme to the lower quartile, that represents one-fourth of your data. From the lower quartile to the median, that also represents a fourth of your data. From the median to the upper quartile, that's another fourth. And then from the upper quartile to the upper extreme is another fourth. So you find these five points, and that five number summary then splits your data up into four like parts that are all equal in size. And so it shows the distribution of the data. And within all each of these ranges, it kind of shows you how spread out that data is. So for example, like this part over here, this is one of our whiskers. It's kind of short in comparison to this whisker. Now the same amount of data points lie within each range and so the difference is that this fourth of the data down here is more spread out than this fourth of the data. Okay, so the numbers that we need to know to build a box and whisker plot are median, which is something that you guys are already familiar with. That's our middle number once we put our data values in order from least to greatest. And then our quartiles, so the lower quartile and the upper quartile, that is finding the median again of either the lower half of the data or the upper half of the data. So imagine if you put your numbers in order from least to greatest and you found the median, that cuts the data into two halves. So you find the median of each half of the data to get your quartiles. The lower extreme and the upper extreme then, those are kind of like your minimum and maximum values. So lower extreme is the least value in the data set, and upper extreme is the greatest value in the data set. Okay, so we're going to walk you through making a box and whisker plot, and then we'll take a look at a few examples of box and whisker plots and see if we can interpret what the, the data is showing us. Okay, so here I have a data set with, it looks like, maybe 10 different numbers. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put those numbers in order from least to greatest. So it looks like my small, smallest number is 14, and then maybe 22, 27, and so on. So get them in order from least to greatest. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to start by finding the median. Remember, we're going to have five numbers that we need to find. So with the median, as I work my way in from either end, so like 14, and then 84, 22, and 80, so I work my way into the middle, I end up with 45 and 50 being exactly in the middle. So I need to figure out what's going to be halfway in between 45 and 50. Now if you remember, a trick we can use is to find the average or the mean of those two numbers. So if I add 45 plus 50 and divide by 2, that gives me a median of 47.5. Now notice how the median is not actually a number in my data set, that's okay. Right, and that is the number though that is exactly in the middle of these five versus these five. Okay, so by finding the median, we now cut the data into two halves. We have the lower half of the data from 45 down, we have the upper half of the data from 50 up. Okay, so to get your quartiles, we're going to find the median of each half. So for the lower quartile, what is the median of the lower five numbers? Now that's going to include 45 because our split between the two halves is happening right here. Okay, so real quick, what is the median of the lower half? Okay, and then what is the median of the upper half? Okay, so I'm hoping that everybody said the lower quartile was 27 and your upper quartile was 64. All right, then we want to identify what are our two extremes, and that's going to be the smallest number in the data set and the largest number in the data set. So in this case, our lower extreme would be 14, and our upper extreme would be 84. All right, once we have these five numbers, so I'll cut them right here up to the side, we're going to draw a generic number line. 
Now what that means is I'm not worried about what the exact values were in my data set. I want to just create a number line that goes from at least 14 up to at least 84. So I'm going to start from 0, go all the way up to 100, I'm going to count by 10. So just a normal number line. Then I'm going to plot those five points. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of approximating, so like 47 and a half would be about right here, right, 27 would be a little bit more than halfway between 20 and 30, and so on. Now I'm plotting these numbers, or these points below the number line, just so I can see everything accurately, rather than trying to do it on top of it with the numbers in the way. Okay, once I have those five points, now we can actually draw the segments, and the boxes, and then the whiskers out to either end. Okay, and so vertical segments through the middle three numbers connect those into a rectangle so that's the box part and then the whiskers go from the core tiles out to the extremes and that is a box of whisker plot okay so what would happen if you have nine pieces of data so it doesn't matter what these are, numbers are exactly but if you had nine pieces of data let's just think about theoretically what's going to happen when you go to find your median and your core tiles and your extremes. So with nine pieces, since that's an odd number, that means that our median is going to be one number directly in the middle. Okay, when you have a single number in the middle as your median, that number is isolated and is not included in either the lower half or the upper half. Okay, so that means that when I go to identify my extremes, that's pretty straightforward and easy. When I get my quartiles, though, I'm looking at the lower half, which goes from the lower extreme up to this value right here. It does not include the median. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to figure out what's exactly halfway between these two numbers. And then for my upper half, again, not including the median, I'm going to have to figure out what is the median of this half, which would be halfway between those two numbers. So again, I know these aren't actual numbers on your screen right now, but you get the idea of how you're going to be splitting it up. So we cut the data in half, but with the median, we cut it in half again, right, with the quartiles, thus creating our four different sections of our box and whisker plot, each containing a fourth of your data. Okay, so as we look at box and whisker plots, we're remembering, right, that between any two points is a fourth of the data which means that our large box here is representing about half of the data because from here, from this is always our lower quartile to our median, that's a fourth, and then from the median to the upper quartile is another fourth. So from quartile to quartile, that would be one-fourth plus one-fourth or two-fourths or one-half of the data. And when we describe the interquartile range, that means it's the difference between the quartiles. Right? We know range means the difference between the maximum and the minimum value. So interquartile range means the difference between your upper quartile and your lower quartile. Okay, so let's take a look at a few box and whisker plots and see if we can make some interpretations. So here is a box and whisker plot that is showing um, the prices of different concert tickets. Okay, so my first question is, if tickets under $35 are sold out, about what fraction is that? So go ahead and type in what you think is represented by the tickets that are $35 or less. What fraction of the data is that? Okay, hopefully you're going to say it's about half. 35, that's my median. I know it's the median because it's the middle of my five numbers, and they're always going to be in order from least to greatest as going my lower extreme, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, upper extreme. So if 35 is the median, then that means half of my data is below it, half of my data is above it. Okay, if tickets costing $47.50 to $50 are front row seats, then what fraction are front row seats? Okay, and hopefully you said that that would be about one quarter or one fourth. So again, between any two points from our five point summary, that represents a fourth of your data. All right, let's take a look at another one here. So this is showing us the prices of watches at a store that are summarized in that box and whisker plot. And so part A, suppose all the watches under $31 are on clearance. What fraction does that represent? Okay, and hopefully you said that that represents, again, about a fourth of the data. So 31, that's my lower quartile. 
So from my lower quartile down to my lower extreme, that's a fourth of the data. And part B, let's say all the watches from $31 to $71 are on sale. What fraction of the watches are on sale? And again, hopefully you said one half of the data. So from quartile to quartile, that is half of the data. All right, and here, as our final example, you can see a comparison between two different box and whisker plots. So this is showing the number of points scored in each game for the 2001 to 2002 season for our New England Patriots and then the St. Louis Rams. Okay, what conclusion can you make about the data? Well, based on the fact that the entire box and whisker plot for the St. Louis Rams is farther to the right on the number line. So as we compare each point, lower extremes, lower quartiles, medians, upper quartiles, upper extremes, for every single comparison point, the St. Louis Rams had a higher number. And so I would say something like the Rams scored more points per game than the Patriots. Right? I would also say that the Patriots, their whiskers are farther apart, so their extremes or their range is farther apart. Therefore, they had more variability in their scoring right? because their range was 41, whereas the St. Louis Rams, their range was only 33. Now, we can't say that the, like, which team won more games, right? Because we know it's possible to win a game with 17 points, and it's possible to lose a game with 48 points. But we can just say, in general, for scoring, the St. Louis Rams scored more points per game than the Patriots. Okay, and a final question here. How did the lower extremes of the points com uh, scored compare? So for each team, how do our lower extremes compare? Well, I would say that our New England Patriots, with a lower extreme of 3 versus the St. Louis Rams with a lower extreme of 15. Um, the Patriots had a much lower score, right? Their lowest score was far smaller than that for the Rams. Okay, and so hopefully you have a good sense of how we can look at a box and whisker plot and interpret the data and how to go about making one. So we'll practice that more in class, obviously. But for now, if you could finish up with recording one thing that you learned or were reminded of, and then any questions that you might have, that would be great. All right, thanks for watching.